did you choose to go away in the winter? Right. Okay, and the short answer is that it's cold in Montana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The next question is, is this the first time they, yeah, I've gone away for the winter? And the answer is no. Uh, we've been choosing to go in the, away in the winter for anywhere from a week to three weeks uh, for a number of years. Again, why? It's really cold in Montana and it gives us a break from the uh, lack of, of uh, warmth and the lack of uh, sunshine. Mm. Um, yeah. How long do you go away? I think my wife Joanne answered that. By the way, my name is Rick. Uh, how do we choose a location? Uh, we go where we think it's interesting, maybe where we know people, um, possibly where we haven't been before. Uh, it does seem when we go to warmer places that we like to go by the, the uh, seashore, which is different for us. Mm -hmm. Another factor I think, and, and I, I think Rick will agree with me, is we try to choose a location that is safe as well. Uh, one of the places we've gone to in the winter has been Mexico. And the last time we were in Mexico, it didn't feel particularly safe, even though we had chosen a location that was smaller and, you know, away from Mexico City and even away from Cancun. But we never, we ended up having an incident uh, of theft and therefore we've kind of taken that off our list. So safety is a real priority for us. This year, we, we made a decision based on the uh, pandemic. We wanted to choose a place that was safe for health reasons. And in the past, we haven't, ha when I talk about safety, I haven't had to choose, think about safety for health purposes, just uh, the typical idea of safety. And in doing our due diligence, we concluded that Costa Rica, where we're at now, was just ideal. It had fairly low um, numbers of illnesses and it allowed us to get away and kind of have our own pot of people and the weather was perfect. So that's why we've chosen Costa Rica for the second time. What type of accommodation are we looking for? Uh, nothing uh, special. Uh, here in Costa Rica, we're staying with friends, so that's important. Um, other places, we've stayed at uh, resorts, we've stayed at uh, uh, smaller places. Uh, that's not as important as long as we feel that it's, uh, it's safe. I think in choosing a location for us, uh, our friends owned a small inn. I mean, we're not staying in their home per se, we're staying at an inn that they owned that we were aware of. Uh, other times we have tried to either get a timeshare or we have tried to get a small place that's comfortable. Our personalities, we're not elaborate people, we don't need something expensive and high-end. We just need something that is clean and has a good bed. It, we personally like to have access to a kitchen and the way that we travel, uh, my husband and I like to do breakfast and lunch as not being a big deal. Coffee and rolls, uh, preferably from a fun bakery, good coffee. Uh, lunch, we like picnic style food uh, that we could eat here on the beach or just happily, but then we like to explore the local cuisine at night. Can you describe what a typical day looks like? Um, we like to sleep late uh, when we can't, when we're next to a beach like here, we like to go to the beach. 
Uh, we also like to uh, take trips uh, uh, like uh, to the interior of Costa Rica, uh, maybe engage a guide. Uh, and we like to uh, follow the local custom of eating dinner late and uh, uh, hanging out a bit afterwards. Uh, do we do a lot of sightseeing and if so, how do we uh, do the travel for it? Uh, yeah, we do a lot of sightseeing. Uh, sometimes we do uh, tour buses. Uh, this time we've rented a car. Uh, even with when we've rented a car, we uh, sometimes get a guide when we get to the location. Uh, mm -hmm. It kind of depends on the look where we've gone. Again, we are not your, what I would call typical snowbirds in that we don't come for months at a time. We, we because of our lifestyles and, and the fact that neither of us are quite retired, uh, we take anywhere from a week to three weeks getaway. And so we want to maximize that time. When we were in Hawaii, for example, which was one of the locations we chose, uh, we rented a car. But when we were in Mexico, we chose not to do that. Uh, and we would hire someone, a travel service, wherever we went because of the nature of Mexico. Uh, here, we have done a combination. The first time we came to Costa Rica, we did not rent a car, but we had access to a friend's vehicle who lived here or was actually snowbirding here. This time, we rented a car so that we would have flexibility. Regarding using the bus system, at least in Costa Rica, uh, I think it would be wonderful because we're older, we have chosen to isolate ourselves more because we're in the in the pandemic era uh, still and so I think you have to think about who you are as a person and I think buses are safe and they're fun but if you're worried about COVID and exposure like that uh, it's better to rent a car or use it or use a taxi which we have done as well and they were very safe. The next question is, do you cook yourself or go out? I think I kind of explained that. My husband and I like to have a leisurely breakfast and our typical breakfast is coffee, sometimes mimosas. If it's the weekend, we have to do that, especially in a country like Costa Rica where the oranges are so wonderful. Uh, it's just a heavenly uh, morning drink. Uh, we like rolls in, in our location here. We found a wonderful little German bakery and we got wonderful bakery products. I also went to a Sunday market and picked up some rolls from a local and we've been enjoying them uh, with our morning coffee. The, the coffee in Costa Rica is just so delicious. So if you're a, a coffee connoisseur, this is a perfect place to be. You can not only take coffee tours, but you can get great coffee, very reasonably priced right here. And so it says, uh, you know, do you cook for yourself? Well, yeah, we do. We cook coffee. Uh, when we were in Hawaii, we, we always made breakfast and lunch, but part of going on tour is to go out. Uh, so we would ration, sometimes we would go to a, a plainer place and we would budget and occasionally go to a fancy place like here in, in Playa Hermosa where we're currently at. There's a wonderful upscale restaurant called Ginger's that we went to on a Saturday. But typically we would either go down and eat at a local place or uh, we've been known to pick up food at the market and just eat it there. Do you meet and talk with other snowbirds? Uh, not really so much, except uh, uh, accidentally. We're, as Joanne said, right. we're not typical snowbirds in that we don't spend the long set time 
at someplace else. I imagine if somebody, for example, went to Arizona for three months every year, then they would have a uh, social group down there. But we don't do so much of that. Yeah, I, we're not opposed to that, but that's not a personal priority for my husband and I. Uh, our priority is us and the atmosphere. And so, for example, we knew nobody when we were in Hawaii, and we just had an absolutely magical time when we were there uh, experiencing Hawaii. For people who like to meet others, how do you meet other snowbirds, and how do you find them? Well, if, if Rick and I wanted to meet somebody here, there on either end of this particular beach where we're at, Condovac is, is down the way and it's a timeshare. And this way there's a large, beautiful hotel and we could go that way. And there's also a hotel in the middle and we would just go or we would go down to the Aquasport bar and we would simply start visiting. And my husband likes a place in Coco, and he could visit with them and, and connect up with them. And so the opportunities are endless to meet people. It's just if you choose to do that. And at this time, we haven't chosen to do that. Right. Wouldn't you say that, yes. Rick? Okay. Can you find the products locally that you need? Suit and food items, personal hygiene, etc. I haven't really noticed the problem. No, in fact, uh, we're from the United States. And what we have found that's been beneficial is that there's, in Costa Rica, where we're currently at, there's pharmacas. And those pharmacists have available to them knowledgeable professionals that even if you don't speak Spanish, you can point at your stomach and go, ouch, and they'll know what you need. And they can give you products that if you were in the United States, you would need to go to a physician and get a prescription for. And that is that has been real beneficial, is that they understand what you need or you can get that and those products are readily available at a reasonable price so at least for this country it was wonderful uh, we had no trouble in mexico we had no trouble in hawaii uh, you know we've traveled abroad a little bit and we've not had any trouble so i think the answer is don't worry about that if you need something, people are very generous in offering help. Next question, what do you absolutely have to take with you? Uh, any medications that are prescription that, that you need. That's the number one thing. Mm -hmm. Any medications that you have. I had a friend of mine who told me that uh, the thing you need to do is take more money and less clothes uh, when you come to a climate like this, which I thought was fairly fun advice. Uh, things we absolutely felt we needed to take with us was we bought a, dispo a portable backpack. So when we went, if we wanted to come out to the beach and uh, have a picnic or if we wanted to take a day trip, we weren't taking our big suitcases. We had a collapsible backpack that we carry with us. Uh, you have to take your, you know, things like your passport in all of these countries you always have to carry your passport and if you've got a car you have to have a driver's license and your passport and so you have to have a way to secure that uh, what else uh, i think that's it you know cl enough clothes that you're comfortable with uh you know we we uh we were laughing because we brought things thinking it'd be cooler at night how silly of us uh, we haven't used our sweaters, we haven't used uh, our, the jackets that we came in, and we certainly haven't worn long pants except when we went in the rainforest. So that was fun. What did you take with you but you didn't need? Rick uh, will tell you that. I, uh, 
I brought a digital camera with me. That It's a nice camera. It's four or five years old. And it's no better than what is currently on my phone. I didn't need to bring that. Uh, I think it's different if you have a professional grade uh, photographic equipment. But other than that, I think if you're just a tourist taking pictures, your phone is going to be fine. Yeah, the thing that, like I said, uh, uh, my husband laughed, he said, why did I bring so many pair of socks? We haven't worn shoes except when we were in the rainforest. And so comfortable shoes, whether they're flip-flops or, or thongs attached to your feet, and then you need a really good pair of either tennis shoes or shoes if you're going to go in this country into the into the forest are very critical. Uh, lightweight pants. Uh, you know, we got a book about the guide to Costa Rica that was particularly helpful to Rick and I. Uh, we uh, we at the last minute we threw in bug spray because he told us to and we knew that we could change our currency here easily which I think people need to be aware of you don't have to go to the bank and get colonies ahead of time or if you're traveling to any other country that the ATM handles that for you or you can go to a bank here and get that and so that was nice to know and um, other than that, I think we, uh, you know, we, we would have brought maybe even more lighter clothes, but we're from a climate where we thought it would get colder. So uh, we learned that, you know, we could have got by with less clothes in that regard. It said, what did you forget to take with you? I'm not sure we forgot anything. I forgot. Yeah, if we, if there was something we needed, we've addressed it. Uh, yeah, we didn't. I think Rick's comment about ab the absolute things you need to take with you are the things you can't live without. Uh, your medicine. That would be hard to replace here if you didn't bring your medicines. Uh, clothes and shoes that you're comfortable with. You can always replace clothes, but shoes are very difficult. You need shoes you're comfortable with. I personally brought four pair of shoes. Slip-ons, sandals, thongs, and tennis shoes. And I can rotate them if I, depending on what I need. But honestly, I've mostly worn thongs and the shoes that strap on to go into the ocean. What are the positive aspects of being a snowbird? I don't know that we're snowbirds, but we do enjoy taking vacations. And in the wintertime, we enjoy taking them in a warmer climate. Uh, because uh, the, we can be outside and it's interesting and uh, we get to see a different culture. Yeah, I, I think we kind of discussed that before. We're snowbirds in a sense because we try to take our holiday when it's snowing at home. But for us, we don't go, like we have friends that go to Arizona for three or four months a year. We don't do that. They take their pets with them. We don't take our pet here. Uh, we, uh, we are snow vacationers for sure. And I would encourage people to do that. It's such a wonderful mindset, reset. You know, get away, enjoy wherever you're at, and then you come back so refreshed and it's very good for us as a couple to do that. We just always feel like we reset each other and you know we've been married for 42 years and so hopefully that's good advice for other people. How much money do you need to go snowboarding in your opinion? You mean snowbirding? Snowbirding. <laughs> yeah. uh, well the travel airlines uh, probably the most expensive. There'll be several thousand dollars. Uh, a car rental can be expensive, uh, two or three thousand uh, dollars. This year? Uh, lodging. Uh, it's up to you. Yeah. Lodging might be 
one to two hundred dollars a night. Uh, meals, fairly reasonable. Uh, you, you probably aren't going to spend a whole lot more than you would at home. Obviously, you need to bring extra as well for souvenirs, etc. It does require some money. Uh, you don't obviously these days need to take it all with you. Just use an ATM machine uh, as long as you've got it in your bank account. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it costs something. It's worth it. Mm -hmm. When I think about how much money you need, you need money to live. And so we're spending money here, but we would also spend money at home. Uh, my husband and I, uh, we have a budget for going out. We like to go out for dinners uh, and have tried to, at least pre-pandemic, go out once or twice a week. It was just our special time to go out. And so here, that's what you're doing. You're going out occasionally. And so I think that, again, depending on what your needs are, there is just up and down this beach, there's a range of options for you. If you want to go high end, you go up on the hill. If you want to go lower end, there's lots of options. Or the grocery store provides lots of options to you. And so I think that based on what your financial means are, you can make it work. Uh, we're by no means wealthy people. And uh, we still make it work very comfortably. We, we don't feel we've had to you know, we don't buy the most expensive food. We don't buy the most expensive rooms. Uh, maybe not the most expensive souvenirs, but we certainly don't feel slighted by that. Do you think it's possible to cut costs without losing too much comfort? I believe I answered that. Health, did you get additional health insurance for the time that you were away? Yeah, we did get some travel insurance with a health component. It covers, you know, a, a basic amount, I believe. It says, if something happened health-related, do you think you will be fine in your current location? Absolutely. Yeah. We had a friend of ours who did get sick and needed to uh, go and see a physician and got immediate and favorable results from having a problem. When my husband and I traveled, not on, we went away for three weeks to Europe and my husband got sick and ended up having to go into the doctor and he got excellent care and assistance and our travel insurance covered that. Yeah. We were very happy with yeah, the results. Yeah, obviously it, it wasn't a large uh, issue and I think it depends on the issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the only health issue in these Central American countries that people need to can keep in mind, and I would suggest to them, is the same thing that happens to a lot of people when they travel, and that's traveler's diarrhea or Montezuma's revenge, and being prepared for that, understanding how that works, and, and being able to deal with it is very important. It doesn't have to take you out, but it can be problematic, and so having the proper medicine and the knowledge to address how to avoid that or minimize it is really helpful. What did you do with your house back home to prepare for the time you were away? Yeah, our daughter is taking care of it. She lives in the same town, so that hasn't been a problem. And we have a dog and we took it to our son and he's taking care of our son, our dog. So uh, we're completely covered. Our neighbors will do our shoveling for us. We, we live in Montana and there's a lot of snow right now and we, we have neighbors that will handle that for us. What did you do with your mail? Our daughter takes care of it. How do you keep in contact with family and friends? That's pretty easy these days with uh, Wi-Fi and texting and uh, email. Um, in fact, I've, I've been doing some work while I'm on vacation. Yeah, I think that's very important that you, you really aren't very isolated in these days and age. Even if you're staying at an inn like we are, that is not, it's just a more basic, more economy minded inn, there's always good Wi-Fi and you can do anything with that. Uh, on one of our recent trips that we took, 
we met a gentleman from Canada and he was at the same hot springs that we chose to go to and he was explaining to us that he was working full time and did he look like it sitting in the hot tub in the hot pool and he said yeah i i've been traveling all over costa rica and working and so he what he didn't indicate specifically what type of job he had but he was hiking and hot pooling it and seeing the sights and working full time without having to take a vacation. What are the negative aspects of being a snowbird? Possibly, possibly getting behind on things back home. Uh, as Joanne said, we're both still working. So we, a little bit. Mm -hmm. we can't get uh, uh, too far behind on that. I think the most negative aspect for Rick and I is we we have a pet we have a, a pup and you know we don't travel with our dog when we're gone this long we we have him stay with our son however we have a friend of ours who travels with her dog and so if you're traveling with a pet that's a whole different thing but that's a negative aspect of not having your animal Obviously, you miss your grandkids or you miss your friends or family. Uh, I don't know that I think there's any particularly negative things about it. All of those are very overcomable. Uh, we like the opportunity to get away. Advice for others. What advice can you give other potential snowbirds? What to do, what not to do, would you recommend others that are thinking about snowbirding to do? That's your last question. Um, if you're going to a non-English speaking place, I think it certainly helps to uh, try and have some rudimentary grasp of, of the language. Mm -hmm. That's not possible in many cases, but uh, I think it, it's a good thing when you can. Mm -hmm. uh, we are really, really fortunate, my husband and I, because we have friends. We have a woman that travels with us, a widow, that has gone on a few trips with us. Uh, I always refer to her as my husband's other's, other wife. Uh, and she speaks the language. And she has family that speaks Spanish. And that is super helpful. I have children who speak Spanish, German, Russian. My, my husband speaks a number of a poco of different things, but I think two things. Being aware of the culture of people and being respectful of that is, is just so important. And I just, like Rick says, having some rudimentary fundamental knowledge is just respectful to the people of Costa Rica. I mean, being able to say gracias or you know, whatever it is, is just really helpful. And I recommend that. And other than that, just don't let your values be imposed on their values. In this day and age with the airlines, just understand that they're doing the best that they can you know and travel as light as you can my husband and i made a trip to europe and we saw people lugging around baggy and we carried one bag between us because it was so important uh, we were moving all the time and that was strictly a, a tourism trip we weren't staying put for very long and so i would recommend to people to recognize and respect the airlines that are taking you here and the people that are doing it. And also, consider traveling light. Just consider, you know, reuse, you don't need a bazillion things, and just travel light. And be knowledgeable of your whereabouts. I mean, uh, one thing we were told about in Costa Rica is that we weren't we weren't physically in harm, but that if I were to go and leave my cell phone on the table, I might come back and it might be gone. So just be respectful of that and don't tempt people. Just know, know how to take care of your stuff and do it. That's all I would say.
and enjoy your traveling.